see everyone back this evening. Hope you had a restful afternoon. If you would, grab your hymn book stand. We're going to sing page number 419. 419, sound the battle cry. Page 419. started tonight. Brother Sean, if you would, sir, please lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, our Lord, that we can gather together in your house to worship your son, Lord. I just pray that you would uh, be here with us as, as we worship, and Lord, I pray that your spirit would move and work, Lord, that we would um, learn something from your word tonight, and that you would uh, be with Pastor as he preaches your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Please be seated. Uh, just a reminder, next week we're going to be uh, having our corn boil. We got to actually corn on order this afternoon and looking forward to a wonderful time of fellowship next Sunday. So that is immediately after the morning service and we'll be going right outside um, uh, over the years. I think we've only had to cancel one time because of weather or postpone it, I should say, and hopefully the weather will be cooperative. It may be hot, so dress appropriately, but uh, that'll be next weekend, um, next Sunday afternoon, right after the morning service. And then no evening service next week. And I do want to remind you, of course, VBS is right around the corner. Brother David Summerdorf also being with us in the month of August. And, of course, coming up in October. I'm very much looking forward to Brother Doug Hammett being with us. Uh, many uh, have told me over the last several uh, months we've been talking about this that they have not met Brother Hammett. It's been a few years since he's been here. And, of course, uh, prior to that... Um, I'm trying to think before he, yeah, before he even went to Africa. So it's been quite a long time since he's actually been here. We saw him via uh, live stream video. He taught our Sunday school class uh, for two weeks in a row whilst he's in Africa. We were live streaming. That was during all the COVID stuff. But um, um, I am greatly looking forward to him being here. I hope it'll be a blessing and encouragement to you. And so that's uh, coming up in October. We'll certainly speak, be speaking a lot more about that as we get closer to it. We're going to go over our memory verse and have another song and then get some preaching tonight. So, brother... Thank you. All righty. In the absence of Stephen, remember to pray for him and his family if you would. I'll be doing the verse again, so if you would turn to Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. And I'm going to need a helper to come up and do the pins for me this morning. Charlie, come on up here, bud. So a lot of pins in there. We need to get rid of a few. You think we can do that tonight? Sure. sure. We'll leave that up to everyone else here. All right. Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14. Here we go. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, 
forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press for the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Do we have any takers tonight on saying the verse? Charlie, should we volunteer anybody? No, we won't do that. <laughs> That'd be uh, awkward. Let's see how that goes. Anyone? Any takers? Nobody? All right. Good job, Charlie. You did a great job passing those wins out tonight. All righty. We'll keep working on that. I'm going to slide this under here, Pastor. All right. And if you would now, go ahead and grab your hymn books, and we're going to turn to page 411, which switched things up. I was looking at the wrong song, but I forgot it was the next page over. So 411, hold the fort. If you would stand, grab your Bibles, because you're going to need it to wave that answer back to heaven. <laughs> your attention please join me over in 2nd Timothy tonight 2nd Timothy chapter 3 and we're making our way through this list of ungodly characteristics and tonight uh, we're going to be talking about one that um, I had to certainly look up the definition because uh, it's one of those things we just we don't use this word very often and maybe if you have ever used it hopefully you've used it the right way but uh, anyway um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'll be starting in verse number 1. It says, This know also that the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, that's what we talked about last week, and here's our word for this week, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And we're going to be talking about this word heady tonight. So um, let's have a word of prayer. We'll define our terms as we get started this evening. Father, thank you, Lord, for your great blessings of this Lord's Day. And um, it's good to be back in your house tonight. I pray, Father, as we uh, look at your word that you'd help us to understand the dangers 
of having ungodly characteristics in our lives. And pray, Father, that we be very mindful to be focused upon you, your Son, the Lord Jesus, and your precious word, Father, that we can overcome uh, any of these things um, and replace them with character that is pleasing to you. Now, Father, bless as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All righty. Well, the word heady is what we're going to be talking about this evening. And if you're not familiar with that word, well, neither was I. And so I had to do some, uh, do some looking up. And so we, I got a, got a word we're going to look at. Hazel Grace, can you help me out tonight? Can you do that? I'm, I'm not going to make you stand the entire time. Your poor little legs wouldn't hold you that long. But uh, you're going to hold this. You're going to hold this word up for me. Okay? You got it. All right. Come on up here. You, you can stand up here on the step here, and uh, there you go. And so, can you hold that up there? Okay. Now this word, and I don't. I, you, you, I don't know if you can read that, but it's a propetes. Can you say propetes? Propetes. Oh my! She's got mad skills. All righty. And so. We, this is the word that is, uh, that is translated heady. It's only used twice in the Bible, and so we're going to be spending some time in another portion of Scripture here in just a little bit. But um, this, uh, the, first, uh, the, the first part of this word, this, uh, this pro in the front here, P-R-O, um, has to do with something that is in front or before. Okay, And um, this uh, petes part of it means to fall. Okay. Um, that's what the word means. Uh, kind of, if you think of it as like lunging forward, okay. So you get the idea. The word "heady" has to do not with just falling on your face, although of course that's kind of implied a little bit, but it's the idea of like running headlong into something, jumping in without any consideration, um, being led forward or jumping forward because somebody says, somebody says, "Hey, let's go jump off a bridge." You know, at parents, you say that to your kids. Now, if, if your friend went and jumped off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge too? All right, well, you get the idea of what heady means. It is, uh, it's doing things without much thought or consideration. Another um, um, de- definition that you'll often see with the word heady means, it means reckless. You're not really thinking things through. You're just kind of like doing stuff without even thinking about it. All right, that's what the word heady means. So we're going to be talking about that tonight. And as I said, uh, this word is used uh, in a couple different places in the scriptures. It's found here, but it's also found over in Acts chapter 19. So we're going to, we're going to spend a little bit of time this evening over in Acts chapter 19. Uh, so if you'll go there with me, please, to Acts chapter 19. And um, uh, we're going to see the context of Acts chapter 19 is Paul the Apostle in the city of Ephesus. Okay. What happens, what big event happens in Ephesus when Paul is there? Big event. Big event. Something big happens when he's in Ephesus. A riot. That's a pretty big event, okay? And uh, this riot, of course, is brought about because of Paul's preaching and Paul's preaching about the fact that, you know, we don't serve a gods that are made by man's hands. Or we, don't, we don't worship statues and stuff. And so we have this fella who was a silversmith and, um, and he, um, um, you'll, you'll note he's mentioned up in verse number 24, there was a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, silversmith which made silver shrines of Diana, um, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. Okay, so we're introduced to this fellow. Now, I want you to just drop all the way down to the end of this uh, event here and look at verse number 36. Somebody sees verse number 36. And so um, um, I, usually, I usually tag Dina due to the reading, but she is down in Kentucky this weekend. So any of you other young people want to volunteer to do some reading tonight? Some young person? Oh, hi there, Isla. Can you read verse number 36 for us? Okay, all right, do nothing rashly. You see that word rashly? That word rashly is the same word that's translated heady over in our text over in 2 Timothy. So you get the idea. So this is the, uh, this is the town clerk saying, listen, we ought not to behave this way. You're acting rashly in what you're doing. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to read through this, um, this account of this riot 
And we're going to kind of uncover why they behave the way they behave. Why, what made them behave rashly, uh, head, uh, you know, being heady, and understand um, why people do what they do. Um, and so we're going to start off. Hey, you doing okay, Hazel Grace? Okay, all right. If you get tired, just let me know. Just say, hey, I'm getting tired. You doing all right? Okay, good. All right. So, um, you know, when we talk about um, being heady, um, you know, people that kind of jump right in, they're reckless, they're head, headstrong is another good way of putting it, um, easily led. So we're going we're gonna to talk about um, their behavior because the town clerk has said, you guys are being reckless, you're being heady. And, and this, is, this is the why part. So you, you're all going to have to help me out here tonight. We're going we're gonna, to uh, start right there at the beginning in verse number 24. We see this fellow Demetrius, okay? So another person wants to jump in and help read tonight. We're going we're gonna to get some, all these volunteers this evening. Any, 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 any readers here tonight want to read out loud? Brother Sean, starting in verse number 25. Uh, 24 or 25? We, we read 24 already, right? That was, uh, did we read 20? I, did I read 24? Somebody read 24. Did I read 26. Did I? Re- did I? You did. Did I? Sort of. Man, I was, I barely remember that. Yes, brother, let's start in 24, okay? For a certain well, I'm glad you guys are paying attention because apparently I'm not. All right, go ahead. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which, silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain onto the craftsmen whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone, alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul had persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship him. Let's stop right there for just a moment. Now, uh, just kind of get the, get the kind of the flavor of the situation here. And uh, this was a um, kind of a craftsman's guild, if you would, a, kind of a union meeting. And a lot of folks are coming out and, and Demetrius is standing up saying, listen, you <laughs> know, this is our livelihood, guys. And who, this fella's coming in, and now people are stopped. You know, we usually we're selling, you know, 100 statues a day. And now, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, but we're not selling as much. This is not working out really well. And he's really kind of stirring up the, the group that's there. And, and, and now it's, it's getting more than just, uh, you know, these craftsmen that are mentioned that are here. He's, he's kind of stirring up the whole town. The next verse we see what's what, what kind of the result of this. He's really stirring people up. And when they heard these things, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And, and so what's going to happen is he is going to stir these folks up. Now, we're talking about heady. We're talking about people that um, jump in without consideration. We're talking about recklessness. One of the, one of the things that causes that type of behavior is found right here. And that is being easily led by others. Recklessness. Um, It's when, you know, somebody else gets all, you know, foamed up about something and says, doesn't, okay, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but this bugs me. You're, You're standing in line at the Walmart. It's a long line. It's always a long line at the Walmart. And, and the person in front of you or behind you has some issue about something, and they're just going off about, blah, 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 and they turn around and go, don't you think so? And I'm thinking, I don't want your problems, <laughs> okay? I, 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 I care very little about what bothers you in reference to this, and I'm just, I'm just listening. But um, because, they're, because people that have issues always try to get other people to have their issues also, Okay? So here you have somebody, had Demetrius. He's got an issue, right? But he's trying to bring other people into it. Someone who is heady, that's the characteristic, all right, that we want to avoid, is easily sucked right in to other people's problems. 
easily sucked into somebody else's battles, easily sucked into somebody else's mischief. <laughs> that is a bad characteristic to be in because you have no idea where that's going to lead you. Because this individual, and we're going to talk about motivations in a little bit, but this individual, he really doesn't care about what happens to you. He just, so, he would just wants somebody else to come along with him on his little journey of, of misfortune. And that's what heady means. You jump right in because it's, it's somebody else draws you right in. So this is classic here in, in this book, in the book of Acts chapter 19, of how, and the, you know, the, the, the town clerk just, he nails it right down. He said, this is reckless. And the recklessness started by them following along with somebody else's problems. That's heady. Let's go on from there. Brother, you want to do some reading here? Um, Wherever you stopped at, just keep going. And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught uh, Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the, the theater. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Okay, well, let's just stop right there, because, we're again, we're talking about being heady and being reckless and things. So here, now we have Paul really wanting to intervene and kind of talk, because Paul wants to talk about what's, what's the real problem here. And they don't want to listen. Now, I know the crowd is gigantic now, but here's Paul wanting to explain, wanting to talk things through. And his folks are, you know, keeping him from that. One of, the, one of the other issues with being heady is that you do not or will not listen to other people. You won't have the conversation. You won't ask the questions. You won't seek for counsel. Something that will keep you from being heady is that you do ask people, what do you think about this? And someone who is heady won't ask for counsel or advice or any type of suggestions from anyone else. You know, if, you, if you're to the point where you're getting involved in things and you don't feel the necessity of talking to other people about it, you are probably right on the edge of making a big mistake. Because when you think you don't need counsel, then you probably are in great need of it. And people that are heady, headstrong, reckless, will not seek good counsel from others. So this is, again, classic example, all right? You got somebody who is stirring up the stuff and just sucking everybody else along with them, and you've got the opportunity where, you know, some, some information's going to be put out there, and they're like, nope, nope, it's not a good idea. We don't want to hear it. Now, I know with Paul, um, he, he probably would have got himself in trouble by, by even standing up and speaking. Of course, that's going to happen with another fellow, but... Um, the point of it is, is there's information out there that could help, but it's not sought after. Okay, so again, we're talking about being heady, and this is, this is how this is progressing through. Um, that was verse number, where, where did you end up, brother? I read 32. Okay, uh, 32. And, and so these folks here, um, um, what's happening is they... The, the folks that are in the crowd, as, as he ends it in 32, we have this fellow, verse number 33, Alexander, who is a Jew. Go, if you would, please read that, if you please, 30, 33. All right, I didn't read 32. Okay, we'll go right ahead. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. All right, we'll stop right there. And we got this confusion, right? This is another characteristic of being heady. And that is, you really don't know what's going on. There's, there is a, some people, so, folks that are heady are often, they're very naive. They really don't understand the situation. They don't understand anything about it. Um, being naive is a, is a classic characteristic of somebody who's heady. They're going to recklessly do things without an understanding of, of really what they're doing and the consequences of it. Um, we're all naive and, uh, you know, Experience is what you gain right after you needed it. And so when, so we all, we all enter into a lot of situations in a naive kind of way. And that's why good godly counsel 
is so essential because others have, others have walked down that road before and they know um, and, and can at least tell us what to expect. Uh, and so these folks are extremely confused. You know, hopefully, you know, when, when, we, are, when we are confused and we, and we uh, are naive about things, hopefully that we learn quickly uh, from our mistakes, whether it be good or, or bad, um, to, um, 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 we as believers um, have to understand that not, not everything that we're going to get involved in um, we're not always going to understand the, the, uh, the results of everything that we get involved in. That certainly is true. Uh, but we don't jump in blindly, uh, understanding that, um, um, that as part of the work of God, that you know, we're going to be doing some things that we don't honestly know how it's going to work out. Now, that's, that is certainly part of faith. That's not being heady. That certainly is a part of faith, being able to trust that God is able to do great things uh, beyond what we think that we can control. But being heady is, is having that, uh, that blindness really to the situation and to the event and really not caring about that. Just jumping in with both feet um, without any consideration to, to any of the consequence at all to it. So these folks here are confused. You doing all right, H.G.? Okay, what's our word? Do you remember? Um, Prop eight taste. There you go. So you got the eight taste part. Where that's the falling a falling ahead part. So we have this great confusion that's going on. Uh, it's verse number thirty-two. If we keep reading from there, my brother. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with a hand and would have made <clears throat> his defense unto the people, but when they knew that he was a Jew. All with one voice, about the space of two hours, cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had appeased the people... All right, we're going to stop right there. We have this gigantic crowd. This is another, another characteristic of someone's heady. Um, everyone else is doing it. Is, isn't, isn't that that rashness? They assume because it's popular that it's Okay. They assume because, you know, everyone else is involved in it. Look how many likes they get for doing it on their Twitters or whatever. And they think, oh, it's gotta, this has got to be fun. And they, they end up, under, they, they don't understand what, what road they're heading down. Because popularity doesn't always mean that something is, uh, is appropriate. And so headiness doesn't care about that. They often just cares about the fact that other people are doing it, so it must be okay. And, and so, again, we're talking about reckless, and the town clerk itself, he nails it about recklessness, and this is, this is classic about heady behavior. And so we have folks that are uh, falling in love, just being sucked right along with other people. Uh, we have a, a lack of, of good counsel. Uh, we have uh, no cons- Very nice. You're doing a great job there. No consideration of, of many other things, being really easily led astray by others, being naive. Uh, and, um, uh, and as we go on from here, we have, this, we have the, um, uh, the town clerk that gets up, and he does what? Uh, and he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, he ought to be quiet and to do and to do nothing rashly. Keep going from there. For you have brought hither these men which are neither robbers of churches nor yet blasphemers of your goddess wherefore if demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man the law is open and there are deputies let them implead one another okay we'll stop right there for one second um here again we're talking about being heady we're talking about this recklessness um the town clerk really kind of works it through. He's, kind of, he's trying to talk everybody down. And, and what he's doing is just providing information. You don't really, you're not seeing the, the, the real picture here. Now, he's, he's not a believer. Um, 
Certainly he's not Jewish, and, and that's, of course, the guy that got up before that. Um, he, he is somebody who simply is, is taking a, a he's, he's standing back, and he's taking a good look at what's going on. And these guys aren't, the people that are acting rashly. So often, the, one of the characteristics of somebody who's heady is they really don't have a full picture of what's going on. They have a very limited view of their kind of, you know, little scope, and they're just looking at one thing. And they're being fed information that, you know, certainly some of it's true, um, but they're being fed information. Man, this sounds like social media, doesn't it? They're being fed, they're being spoon-fed little bits of information and really not getting the full picture. Somebody who is heady doesn't have a good view of really what's going on. They've got this limited little scope and they're being asked to act upon that and jump on someone else's bandwagon often and then jump headlong into something that, they're, that that's going to be a problem. The next verse. Uh, but if... If ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. Keep going. For we are in danger to be called... Oh, in we are in what? Danger. You mean there's consequences? Apparently. Go ahead, brother. To be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. All right. So, again, we're talking about being heady. Another characteristic of somebody who's heady is they do not consider consequences. And, that, and that's exactly what the town clerk, clerk had said. Now, the Roman Empire, uh, they had different, uh, they, had, they, had a, a, they had a very particular structure of how they dealt with certain towns and cities and provinces. And when there was a, an area, uh, Ephesus was a big city, second, second largest city of the Roman Empire. And, and so when they behave themselves. And so the Romans are like, all right, you guys are going to behave yourselves? We'll just kind of back off. You've got your own governor. Things are running well. We're not going to flood your place with troops and keep it on, and keep it a strong arm on things. They, were, they had a lot of flexibility. And the town clerk says, you're going to mess that up. If we keep this up, you're going to see troops marching in here to keep this place peaceful. Is that what you want? They didn't consider that. They considered just the fact that Demetrius was saying, look what's going on to our great goddess Diana. Um, and so they didn't even think about that. Often somebody who's heady is someone who doesn't consider the consequences of their actions. And then they end up with a big price to pay when it's all said and done. And, and so... so what you see through Acts chapter 19 is this classic example of this characteristic and how it plays through in these people's lives. So we're going to talk a little bit more about how to avoid that. Hazel Grace, let's say it one more time. You ready? Probe. Probe. Eight tastes. Eight tastes. Excellent. Give her a big hand. You can go ahead and have a seat. We're going to, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more. You can go ahead. You can ha hang on to that. That's yours. That's a souvenir. That's your gift. There you go. She did a great job. And so these are classic examples of that. And so, you know, so, so often what happens with, with being heady, um, there's, there's always some kind of trouble or regret. And I was, just, I was sitting back thinking about some of the times that people did things uh, in the scriptures that were kind of rashly or did things that they regretted. You know, a classic example uh, is, uh, is Joshua. Joshua, he, he fought the battle of Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. Walls came tumbling down. Great song, you know, but excellent story too in the Bible. But um, immediately following the battle of Jericho was the battle of what? AI. That is a prophetic thing about artificial intelligence. I did not know that. I just figured this out the other day. I'm going to have to write a book. A prof yeah, the Bible code on artificial intelligence. Anyway, the battle of AI. Um, the, um, we, we have this group of men <laughs> that he sends to spy out the city of AI, and they come back and say to Joshua, don't send everybody. <laughs> just send a couple thousand guys, and we could can, we can take these guys. And Joshua just says, okay, go ahead and do it. 
And what happens at the Battle of Ai? What's that? They all die. They didn't all die, but a whole bunch of them, okay? It was, uh, they got whooped, okay? Um, Joshua came all apart and everything. Um, Joshua acted in a manner which um, be, it began to, it, it really shows us kind of the consequence of doing things rashly. What, what was lacking in, in, um, in Joshua's decision? What was lacking there? Christian joy? Trust in guidance. guidance. Humility. It, it was, certainly was humiliating. Um, humility. I mean, he thought that, well, I could do that. And well, he was, that's exactly what he was being told. It was more collective. You know, we, we, can, handle, we can handle this, you know. Um, I mean, uh, they just came out of the desert. I'm like, give me a break. I'm a trained army. They can't handle anything. But who can? Yes, sir? He fell as counsel of the Lord. He, that is a, that's the major part of it, isn't it? And um, counsel, certainly, especially of the Lord. And so we're talking about prayer, really pleading with God. I, I need to make, here's Joshua. He's the new leader of the nation of Israel, right? And God's, Moses is telling him, you know, be strong and of good courage, you know. And uh, God's giving him that speech too over and over. Be strong and of good courage. Um, meditate upon the word of God, you know. Um, and, and so here he is. He's got to make this decision. It's you know it's a battle decision, but he's like oh, the guys is like oh we can handle this, and he's like go go ahead and do it. And they jumped in with both feet, and uh, they got got in some deep water. Um, and so there, are, there are, you see you see events in the Bible where people just do things rashly, and, and let's be honest, Joshua was a good godly man. It's not he wasn't a, he wasn't an idiot. He wasn't some kind of foolish unbeliever who didn't care about the things of God. He was a, he was a good, godly man who jumped in to do something um, without really thinking it through and, and following through you know, the good, godly advice, prayer, thoughtfulness, an understanding of the fact that you know, um, the only reason we won the last battle is because God gave us some very specific <laughs> instructions and if you, if you just would have thought about that, I don't have any good instructions from God on this one. Maybe I ought to hold off a little bit. So, I mean, there are times that believers make some mistakes and act rashly and, and have consequences. Now, now based on that, um, we're talking about folks that are, are heady, okay? Okay. Um, we do make mistakes sometimes. And I want to say about that is that we ought to learn from our mistakes. Because we, we all do have a tendency on occasion to act, act heady, act rashly, uh, jump in with both feet without considering it. Um, and, and Lord willing, if we do that... Um, the price that we pay, hopefully, is not too bad that we can actually learn from it. Joshua learned from it. Oh, he, oh, I love it. I just love that story where God comes to Joshua. Because if you can read Joshua, um, and his, his, um, he's, he's just pouring things out to God, you know. Um, and God says, get up off your face. I just love that. Um, and, and what you see after that is, is Joshua... Um, really kind of um, getting a hold of God. The, he's, he's still going to make mistakes in the future, um, but so often what you see Joshua doing is saying, you know, that was a big lesson I learned at the Battle of Ai. I'm not going to do that again. Um, so learning from our mistakes is a, a good way of avoiding being heady or, or acting rashly, prayerlessness, uh, bad counsel, all those things kind of add up to making mistakes. And hopefully you've learned from that and you move on from there. Um, the, in reference to that, um, another way of not being heady, I'm, I'm reading from Proverbs 12.15. Um, what's taught here in Proverbs 12.15 is found in many other places in the scriptures, okay? So I'm sure you have a favorite verse on this one. 
And I'm reading from 12, this is Proverbs 12, 15. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes. That's, well, that's a heady person right there. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. One of the ways to avoid being reckless, being heady, is to talk to people. When there's an inclination to do something or somebody says, hey, come along with us and let us do whatever, and you're thinking to yourself, maybe I should talk to somebody about that. You know, in the day and age we live in, there's a lot of people that make a lot of financial mistakes. And with, you know, the volatility of, um, of many different things in, in, um, as far as uh, the, the economy goes, people, people can make some big mistakes. You know, properties and, and investments and all those type of things. I've shared with you uh, several years ago, I got a phone call from a fellow in our church, and he said, would you talk to my friend? And he's really distraught. And, um, you know, come to find out that he had a, another friend that had uh, this, this stock opportunity, one of those things like, you're never going to have an opportunity like this again. You're going to double your money. <clears throat> and the guy had just retired from I don't know how many years, had his whole entire retirement package, handed it over to this fella to invest in this whatever, lost it all. Could you imagine having to retire after 30 plus years or whatever and dust, just gone. And this guy was just broken. <laughs> That's, that's heady. Don't you think you should talk to somebody about that? Somebody you can trust and say, well, I mean, what do you think? You know, the old adage, if it sounds too good to be true, probably isn't. Things like that. I mean, people may do, do some really dumb things because they simply just don't talk to other people about it. Good counsel. Uh, young people, I just got to remind you, you know, um, your parents are a great source of experience because they have actually, you know, you th well, they don't understand. Yeah, they've walked down the same road you have for the last, whatever, 40-some years. They understand. And there's a lot of good godly counsel out there because I'm just, I read it again. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. You just got it locked in your own head. You know, what can go wrong? This is the right thing to do. And that's a foolish way to think without talking to other people about it. So, so we have, um, we have uh, that consideration, okay? Now, um, another, in reference to uh, being heady, you know, learning, of course, learning from your mistakes because we're all going to make mistakes and we just learn from that and we know not to jump in the deep end the next time, okay? We, uh, we understand that. We, learn, we have to learn to, to get good information, understand what's going on before we make decisions, before we do things, to ask ourselves, you know, the questions and ask other people to give us advice on things. Um, one of the things that drives headiness or rashness is, is personal lusts or desires. It's, you know, it's, it's what I want. That, that great portion of Scripture um, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, um, if you're not familiar with that, of course, Paul is talking to Timothy and he's talking about wealthy people and there's richness and out there. And he makes that great statement, the love of money, that's verse at 610, the love of money, for the love of money is the root of all evil, um, which... While some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced them th themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. And, and one, of the, one of the problems with, with, um, uh, with being heady or being rash is that often they f people follow their own personal desires. The love of money, that's covetousness. And it doesn't always have to be money, physical things like that. A covetousness is that lusting after anything. I want that, I want that, I want that. And so people, people really destroy a lot of their lives when they go after something that they have a personal lust towards. Could be a person. I'm going to run off with so-and-so. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get involved in whatever. But, you know, everybody's advising me, telling me, don't do that. You're going to make a mistake. I don't care. I want to just follow my heart kind of mentality. 
And oh my, our hearts are deceitful and wicked. And we make a lot of bad decisions when we just kind of jump in that way. And we ignore the counsel of others and, and um, we just follow after that. Hey, you know, the, the, um, I, I want to read the, the last part of that verse that I ended on. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. And, you know, if we, if we set our life in pursuing things that are good, uh, we have less of a tendency of being led away into things that are bad. It's kind of like saying if you're heading the right direction, it's, it's hard to end up in the wrong place. And being heady will always take you to the wrong place. So <clears throat> following personal lusts and desires help, will, will push you over the edge of being heady. Um, I was, um, the other days, I was working on this, Life of Samson kept coming to my mind. And um, he, was, he was a heady man. He, he was rash. You see all throughout his life, and he, the personal lust he has, and of course, the desire for these relationships with these Philistine women. And, and, and so he was, he was always going to his folks, say, oh, I, I, I saw this girl, get her for me. But she, she's not Jewish. I don't care. Um, I want her. And you see these bad relationships that he has all throughout his life. And it cost him, cost him a lot. It cost him his eyes eventually in, in his life. But um, um, and you see somebody like Delilah comes along and just plays right into his rashness. He's, he was a heady man and driven by personal lusts and desires, and it cost him dearly. So we have to be careful with those things. Um, one of the last things I want to mention in reference to being heady, because we started off by saying, remember, we, we started that in, in Acts chapter 19 with Demetrius, right, the silversmith, who was just trying to, you know, suck everybody else into it. One of, the, one of the questions we have to ask ourselves, especially when other people are trying to get us to either do things or be involved in stuff or go a particular direction, we've got to ask the question, and the question is why. So when it comes to Demetrius, why was Demetrius stirring up this whole thing in the, in the city of Ephesus? What's that? It's all, for Demetrius, it's all about the money. Okay, it wasn't his passionate care for the goddess Diana. It wasn't, look at this, look at this majestic temple. There's still ruins of the temple there in Ephesus. Take a city tour, I suppose. Uh, but there are some of the ruins that are left there. It was a magnificent, it was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And, and it was magnificent. It, it wasn't that he was standing back and saying, look at the grandeur of this place. What did Demetrius want? It's all about the money. And so he stirs up this whole thing. He gets a movement behind him because he wants money. A lot of times, people that are reckless, heady, okay, they get sucked into things and they have no idea of what they're getting sucked into because the person who is sucking them into it doesn't care one bit about them, they care about something else. They have some other type of lust or passion. Somebody that wants power, somebody wants control, somebody just wants money. There's a lot of motivations that are behind people and they, the only way they can gain that is to suck other people along with them. And I just want to say, I mean, this is, we're entering into the election season, okay? We've got a, we've got a whole other year, right? We're just getting started with it. Wait till the commercials start and the bulk mailing that you'll get. Um, a lot of times with politics, people will invent situations so that they can suck other people right along with them. Little town of Mount Holly, where I'm currently living. Do you know those poor little foxes live in that little, little forest there on Grant Avenue? There's a developer that wants to build a couple of um, uh, townhouse on, on this little property he bought. 
And um, because of that, they'll be tearing down some trees. So there's a guy that lives on the next street over. It's at Radcliffe, I guess. Is that Radcliffe? Okay. And what's, what's that? Rutland. Okay. And, and some of these, some, his property goes up to his backyard, and he doesn't want his trees to be cut down. And so now he's created this, 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 this whole, you know, we're concerned about the foxes. <laughs> we got this flyer in the mail. I, I talked to that fellow, it was last year, and he, he, he just doesn't want to lose his trees. <laughs> so he's trying to stir up the entire neighborhood. He, um, a, couple, a couple months ago, the flyer that went out was about building these uh, townhouses, and you know, the, it's kind of like one of those, you know the kind of people that are going to be moving in there, and it's going to increase the crime, and now it's, you know, the foxes, they had, he sent this little picture of the fox on it, you know, these foxes live in this forest that we're going to be cutting down, and all, he doesn't care about the foxes, okay? What's that? Foxes don't need a forest. They don't, yeah. They don't need a forest. They got your backyard, brother, and your chickens, too. Anyway, um, he doesn't care. What he's trying to do, what he's trying to do is the same thing that Demetrius did. He just likes his view. He doesn't want to lose his view. And so he's, he's trying to build this, you know, whole, whole uh, you know, feeling and trying to suck everybody else in the neighborhood along with it. Okay? That's what... You got to ask the question: Why is this person trying to draw me along on this? Why does he want me to jump on his bandwagon? What is it that he's looking for? And often, it, well, with Demetrius, it was all about the money. You have uh, classic example: Rehoboam. Remember that? And we, we see Solomon's out of the picture. Rehoboam is now the king. Folks are saying, hey, if you lower the taxes, we'll follow you forever. And, uh, you know, some of the older folks have been around there saying, you know, that's a really good idea. And, then, and, his, and his young friends, like, no, you let them know that, you know, what, what, what your dad did with his son, you're going, ah, you know. And you, you read that and you think, well, why, why did they feel that way? Because they were, they were living off the generosity of the king. Less taxes means less stuff. Less stuff means we're not going to live as well as we've been doing. So um, let's, uh, let's not give the king that kind of advice. There's so much that is driven in this world today um, around lusts and passions and things like that. And so many people get sucked into it so quickly. So, you know, whether it be some kind of movement like that or whether it be, you know, a, a friend of yours who just, you know, they just want to suck you along with them because they want somebody to blame when things fall apart. Or, or maybe they know that you've got some, you've got some kind of resources that you could probably help pay for some of this as we go through it. Um... You know, there's a, lot of re there's a lot of reasons why people try to get other people along with them. And, and most of the time, it is, it's, it's not good. You just got to ask the question, why? People that are heady, that are reckless, seldom ask the question, why? They just blindly go along with it, and then they end up re reaping the consequences for it that they had no idea were coming and they get blindsided by it, and they go, I, I didn't know. Well, you didn't ask. So one of, the, one of these ungodly characteristics that we see in 2 Timothy chapter 3 is this little word, heady. And as I said, it's not used very often in the Bible, but it's, it's, um, um, it's clearly illustrated. They're in the book of Acts chapter 19. And, you know, thankfully... You know, everything got settled down, and Paul the Apostle's ministry continued there. Paul left town shortly after that, and the church continued to grow. But um, it's that type of behavior that the world is constantly um, encouraging. Because some, uh, so often is the case that 
those that have mischief in mind or, or some type of lust or something, they, are going, they're, they're going to, they feed off of people that are heady. They feed off of people that are reckless. They feed off of people that don't ask counsel. They don't look for good advice. They aren't thinking about consequences. They have no consideration. They're driven by their personal lust, and they get sucked right into it. And that, not, that ought not to be us as believers. With eyes wide open and our hearts directed towards the things of God and fleeing away from ungodliness and lust, we are fleeing towards righteousness. And if our hearts are heading towards the right direction, we are less inclined to be sucked into the wrong things. Being heady is a dangerous thing. And it will take you down a path that you will regret when you get to the other end of it. So open your eyes up. And ask the hard questions and seek the things of God. And you'll avoid the, cons the harsh consequences of being heady. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I'm just so thankful, Lord, that you certainly extend to us so many warnings throughout your scriptures, whether they're direct statements that you make in your word or these examples that we find all throughout the word of God. Uh, it is a blessed thing to know that you care for us and you want the very best for us. And I do pray, Lord, that we would consider this, um, um, this characteristic and, and long to avoid the temptations of jumping in uh, without any consideration at all. And so, Father, I, I do pray, and, and especially, Father, I do pray for the young folks that are here tonight. I know... Teens, are, are, there's so many temptations out there to be a part of something, to be uh, drawn, drawn away by their peers. And, um, and Father, for, for all of us, the temptations are certainly there. And, and I do ask, Lord, that you would help us all to be very mindful that you have a better path, a better life for us as your children. And Lord, that we would not act harshly, rashly, and head, headstrong, but Father, that we would submit ourselves to your will, to your way, and to follow after righteousness. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Mm -hmm.